everybody. Um, so we're going to have a two-part video. Let me adjust the mic a little bit. Coming up, where we explore whether it's worth it, or if you can make your own wet molds in the style that Buckle Guy kind of popularized, um, because. We do get the comments sometimes that these are a little bit expensive, and I agree, but I think once you see how making your own wet molds goes, uh, you'll find the value in these. However, there might be a shape that you can't find and want to make it yourself, so we are going to wake, make our own Buckle Guy style wet mold. Um, the big difference being this is made out of very thick marine ply, which is water uh, resistant, and we're gonna just be using regular plywood and then we'll put a coat of shellac on it if we like the shape and we won't if we don't. So the first way that we used to do wet molding is we would make a mold like this and then we would put some leather on it while it was wet and we would stick it down and tape it and, or tack it or whatever so we get the shape we'd use sharpies. You can go back on the channel, done it tons of times. Then um, Buckle Guy kind of popularized the style of having a topper where you just push this down, clamp it, and it does all the work for you and makes really smooth molds, which you can see with this one. So this is obviously the first time I made it. I made my own wet mold in preparation for this video to see if it would work. Um, you can see that even though this is going to be cut off, super clean lines, all done at home with basic hand tools. Now, I, I do want to make a disclaimer here. You're gonna need some tools that can kick back, can do dangerous stuff. So if you don't have woodworking experience, um, be very, very, very careful or have someone else do this for you or buy the buckle guy, the buckle guy uh, molds. Because we're gonna be using jigsaw, we're gonna be using a, a hand router. Um, those are all things that are like, if you're not used to using them, they can kick back and do all sorts of bad stuff to your hands and you wanna protect your hands. So we went from just simply wet molding around pockets, which works, to having our frame set up, which works even better. Now the question is, it's a two-part question. Can you make your own, and how easy is it to make your own wet mold in this style? Can you get it to work? And is it cost effective versus buying, not even just Buckle Guy, plenty of people make them now, a pre-built mold um, that will do what you want it to do because you have to factor in your time making the mold, etc. So what I've done is I have designed a vertical sort of um, peasant style shape and we're going to make a wet mold out of this and then we're going to make a bag out of it in the second video. So these are going to be my templates. Um, it's just two printouts of the same shape but as you can see one is about I believe it's about eight millimeters it's one centimeter bigger than the other shape. Now the inner shape is going to be our inner mold and the outer shape is gonna be the outer sheath so that we have room in here for our leather. Now I'm pretty sure that if you were to do this on CNC you would do a much smaller tolerance, but since we're shaping this with hand tools, I wanna to give myself a little extra room um, just because I like to use thicker leather on these, eight, nine ounce leather, and this will allow us to get a nice crisp edge to stitch without the sides of our outer sleeve pressing down. And if I have any little jagged inconsistencies, they'll scratch the leather. This way, um, it'll keep everything held down tight. It might be a little bit uh, loose as far as the fitment goes, but with the stitch line, from what I found, it's better to err on the side of going a little bit bigger and the stitch line is really all I care about because the mold will be taller than the top piece. So the top piece isn't going to be touching the mold at all. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm cutting out one of the shapes in the big size and then I'll cut the other one out in the small size. So the first thing we need to do, because we're going to be using a, um, a trim router bit, when the way that this works is this is a guide bearing and this will ride along the template we're going to make and anything we glue on top of it, it will cut to the exact shape. So the first thing we need to do is make our template out of quarter inch plywood. And we wanna make sure that this is really, really close to the shape that we want. Now, the thing that I've learned in, in trying this a couple times to make this video is that little tiny 
uh, variations in shape never really, like you think it's going to be totally exact, they're never going to come out in the leather. So if you have a little bobble or anything, don't really worry about it. Um, the leather kind of absorbs those mishaps. And I'm going to put this on one side, because I'm cutting inside, um, which we're in the workshop, I would normally do this um, like outside or somewhere else, but we have our lighting set up in here and it's really not that much um, of a mess. It, it's, it'll be a little bit of a mess. So don't worry, usually do this outside. This is not the normal practice. Let me move the mic closer. So the first thing we need to do, we, we want this positive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my jigsaw with, I switched out the normal wood blade for a fine tooth blade because this is very thin. And we want to cut a little outside of this black glove Sharpie line. Then we're going to sand right up to it so that we know that our pattern is perfect. So as you can see, um, without a bandsaw or anything, just a simple uh, $99 jigsaw, it's really easy with the quarter inch ply to get a nice um, close cut even without sanding. Uh, just make sure, I was always afraid to switch my blade out because I was like, I don't know how to switch my blade out. Usually on most of them you just turn it and you want a nice fine tooth um, blade. That's going to make making your cut and making your and sanding down much easier. So. Go out and buy a pack of, of uh, jigsaw blades that aren't super chunky. We are going to actually switch out for this probably when we get to the thicker material because what we're going to do is, instead of using uh, the thickness of ply that we want our bag to be, we're going to use multiple pieces of 3 eighths, I believe, or half inch ply. We're going to stack a couple of those up. Um, a, because that's what I have, but B, because it's going to make, it's just going to make our job easier. Um, because we're just using hand tools. If you're using a CNC router, if you have a wood shop, again, feel free to use one inch ply if you want a one inch thick and you only want to do this once. Um, but we're gonna have to use do things a couple times because we're only using these hand tools that we have because I don't have a wood shop. So I'm gonna go sand this down really quick to this line. You can see how I left the Sharpie line here. I'm gonna sand up to the line and then I'll come, I'm gonna come back and show you guys how we're gonna put our router bit in and make our essentially copies of this that we're going to turn into our mold, the top part of our molds. All right, so this is a, um, a flush trim bit, and there's two types of flush trim bits. So this is a bearing, and this is basically the bearing is going to ride on the template, and the trim bit is going to cut whatever's under it or whatever's over it on top to the, be the same shape as our guide. Now there's two types of these. You get it with the bearing on the on the bottom and the bearing on the top. I have one with the bearing on the bottom because I used it to trim out um, linoleum countertops. We're going to make it work with this. This basically just means that we're going to tape. We're going to use some double stick tape. You can use like not the crazy hot glue, like just regular hot glue. You can use that as well. Um, but for us, we have plenty of double stick tape laying around. So I'm just going to apply some here and here. And then we'll peel that off. And these are the dots. These are the cool sticky dots that Buckley Guy sells. Um, and then I'm going to apply it right to the edge here like that. That should be enough to get us started, but we shall see. So the one thing that you want to be sure of is that you have your router set up properly to where the bearing is going to hit the template, 
but the cutting blade is not. The cutting blade is only going to cut the material that you want it to cut. Because you can, if you set it too low, then you can be cutting directly into the template that you just made. And that's not what we want. So we're going to go over here. I have my router set to the suggested speed. And I'm going to move the mic away so it's not too loud. And we're just going to route this out. All right, so we have our template here, our three pieces, and I'm just going to use more of this tape, which will be linked below. Um, not a lot of it, just to hold these together um, so we can get them stacked perfectly. And then we'll just nail them to, I don't think I even needed that top one, but um, once we get these stacked the right way, we will put them on a base. And that our bottom of our wet mold will just need to be roughly, we're going to do a 3 16th inch round over and sand the edges just a tiny bit, although we shouldn't need to if I can line this up correctly. Which is why I like using this tape because it gives you the opportunity to move things a little bit. There we go. That'll be our bottom. So let me go cut a base out of half inch ply and um, we're looking really good and we'll just brad nail everything basically directly to the half inch ply. Um, we want to make sure we don't get too big of a piece because we won't be able to fit our clamp clamps on it. Okay, so I cut two pieces of half inch ply the same size. One's going to be the base to our wet mold. So all those pieces that we just put together, we're going to put about there. I went and sanded this down a little bit. And the important thing is you want to give yourself enough clamping room so that because especially if you're using half inch as opposed to three quarter, it's not as strong. It'll bend a little bit. Um, you want ample clamping room. And I'm just going to use some long brad nails to make sure that everything stays put. And there is a good chance that I just nailed this directly into the... Well, at least we know they made it through. Looking pretty good. I'm very happy with this. But you can see how much work it is, especially if you don't have the tools. Um, so it's up to you whether you want to. It, it is really fun, admittedly, to make shapes that you just think about a shape and then you just make it. But uh, you do need some tools. You do need some experience. So right now, I'm going to switch out our router bit to a 3 16 roundover bit because we need to round over these sides because they are super sharp and they will do bad things to the leather if we leave them as they are. And that's all it takes. Uh, the bottom of our mold is done. If you want to, you can sand down this little ridge. I never get my placement right on roundover bits like that. So I'll probably go through and just give this a light sanding. We need to now turn our attention to our negative, which is the piece that's going to slide over the top. Um, because that's kind of the scariest part to make. And we are making it out of this piece of plywood that we cut out that is half inch to match our base. And we are basically just going to drill a hole and cut right through because that's the only way I can think to do it without having a CNC or some sort of deep like plunge router, which I don't have. 
Um, so we're just gonna make we're gonna put the uh, the jig skill skills to the test. The jig saw skills to the test <laughs> by just simply cutting that out. The first time I did this, I used a chunkier blade to do my jigsaw for this half inch cut, and it was a pain in the butt. This cut the, the quarter inch really well, which obviously it's quarter inch, but I'm gonna try it on the half inch and see if it gives me a cleaner cut. And I'm gonna be aiming for the inside of this line and then going in and hand sanding, um, but that's really all, you can, all I can do. I, I don't have any other tools to make this easier for me. Again, Buckle Guy CNC's them. Lots of people do different stuff with router tables and stuff. This is the tools we have, so it's the tools we're gonna use. And here we go. So. Our negative fits pretty good. You can see it's a pretty big tolerance, but that's because I want to use a really thick leather. Um, the top isn't that great, but remember, I'm cutting the top off. So it's going to be, because it's going to be a bag. So all I'm going to do is, I'm going to take some sandpaper. I'm just going to hand sand that little tiny ledge that the round over bit left us. Because it's really more of an optical illusion because it's plywood than it is an actual ledge itself. If you want to go crazy with this, you can take some Bondo or body, like auto body filler and do the sides. But I'm telling you right now, unless you're wet molding like super thin leather, like two, three ounce, three, four ounce, it really does not matter. Um, the leather is not going to pick up the grain structure or anything like that unless you really want it to and take the steps to do so. Um, even this little gap I'm not going to fill. I'm just going to sand down. And that is it for our base. I would highly suggest not doing this inside. Next thing, we have our negative. So our negative fits. Uh, all I'm gonna do is break the edges with some sandpaper. You can see where I've already sanded up to our Sharpie line. So it should get us exactly the shape that I want. And I tend to err on the large side when it comes to the negative part. Um, this being the negative, that being the positive, I guess, or the male and female, whatever. Um, just so that I have room, I like to make these out of really thick leather. Um, if you like using seven or eight ounce leather, feel free to do, so this is a centimeter gap around the whole thing. Feel free to close that into like half a centimeter, uh, you know, six millimeters, something like that. But you, as you can see, it is, it's not difficult to get these results, it just takes experience, some tools, and some time. Uh, we're about an hour and a half into this build. Um, so you have to decide what, you know, what, what is worth more to you, your time or your money, or if the, the, a shape is not available by a vendor or whatever, can you do it yourself to get this shape? Like this shape, no one sells this shape. And I'm, ex I'm seeing this as a little peasant, like acorn collecting pouch from a, you know, a, um, like a movie, um, a fantasy movie or something. Um, and I'm going to use a, a Torx thing and have a little handle and a strap. And so no one sells this shape. So I had to make it myself. Now, we've proven that you can. We're, what we're going to do next is we are going to put this in the wet mold. And next week, we will build the actual bag itself. But for now, we're going to leave you with a little bit of cliffhanger with the leather nice and laid out flat. The only thing is with the half inch instead of three quarter inch on the top, it is a little flimsy. So you wanna make sure you have enough clamps that you can support not only the corners, but the centers as well. Otherwise, if you leave it this thin, um, this plywood is gonna kinda of bend a little bit. So because this is an inch and a half tall, um, it's a little taller than regular molds, we're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit of extra. So what I like to do is kinda of go around and almost start it the old fashioned way by pushing down everything and making sure that we're gonna have plenty of uh, leather to make our shape. And you should see it sticking out once we start putting in our mold here. So that's where our clamps come in. And then the rest of it is basically just like the buckle guy mold sets where I'm gonna go kind of like you're tightening lug nuts in a star pattern. 
I'm going to do one side, then I'm going to do the opposite side. Because, and actually, we might have a little too much leather. If you run into this issue here and here, where we have a little bit of buckling, what we can do is, now we know that this is going to be our corner seam, we can go through, and we can, not a lot, but we want to be able to make sure that our clamps can fit in nicely and get us the good pressure that we need to make this a nice crisp wet mold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and cut this leather. Now remember, this is thick leather. This is not 4 or 5 ounce. This is a 9, possibly 10 ounce um, Wicket and Craig. So what comes with the custom nature of making your own wet mold is that you kind of kind of figure out all of these little measurements on your own. So we're going to line that back up. We're going to pop this on and we're going to install, I think I have seven clamps here. So we're going to distribute those evenly, but we're going to install them on opposite sides so that we can kind of hone in on our clamping pressure very carefully. And now what I will do is, in about an hour, I'm going to come back and I'm going to move these clamps. Um, once these wet molds have been in the mold for like an hour, if you take them out, really nothing's going to happen. You're not going to lose your shape or anything. This is such thick leather and this is such an intense mold um, that you don't have to worry about that. But you can see now since I have all of these on, I'm going to go around and give them all an extra squeeze or two, making sure that they're really tightened down well. And there we go. So that's where we're going to leave you for part one. In part two, we're going to make this a real bag. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. If you make your own wet molds, I've heard of people 3D printing wet molds. And my whole thing with this project is, is it worth it to buy a wet mold as opposed to making it? Um, and can you make a wet mold of the same quality as a professional wet mold? Now, obviously, if you have a full workshop of tools for wood, yes, you can. But we're using, you know, $90 Home Depot tools. Um, and you do have to keep it in account. A good router bit is $25, $30 bucks in the U.S. and you need two of them. So that those two are the price of a wet mold. Um, so really, we're just comparing and seeing here. Um, I think I'm leaning towards if there's a shape that I want that, is carried by a manufacturer, I'd rather the CNC version, but if it's a shape that I want to make custom like this, I now know that I have um, the skill, even with minimal tools, to make it myself. So we will see you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.